system that trains your body to fight any foreign agent. Plants are helpful for the ecosystem. It's an electronic device for storing and processing data. The nervous system is all the collection of nerves in your body. Yeast is a eukaryote. Welcome to Spectacular Science, where it's all about science, with your host, Akshay. Hey listeners, welcome back to this episode of Spectacular Science. I'm your host, Akshay. Have you ever wondered about food chains? You know, when one animal eats another or, uh, or an animal eats a plant and it goes to the next and the next to the next. Well, food chains do more than that. It shows the flow of energy through ecosystems or different groups of animals and plants. And this flow of energy is essential to keeping a balance in nature and on Earth. And when these simple little food chains are laid together, they can create a ginormous food web, which has a lot of things to it. Well, how do food chains and food webs work? And what makes them so special? And what makes them so important? What are the parts of a food chain? And what role do animals and plants play in it? Well, in this episode of Spectacular Science, I'm going to take you on a deep dive into the science of food chains. Get ready, because this is dealing with a lot of food and a lot of food in the ecosystems on Earth. Alright, let's get right into it. First of all, what is a food chain? Well, to understand how plants and animals interact, scientists and researchers make diagrams called food chains. A food chain shows a sequence of living things in which the one organism eats the one below it. Most animals eat more than one thing, so all of those show feeding relationships. And we use food webs, which are made of multiple different intersecting food chains, to describe it in more detail. Let's break this down a little bit. Well, energy in food can be traced back to the sun. All food, even food that we eat, even if it's not plants, it can still be traced back to the sun. Living things need a constant supply of energy. The sun provides that energy, which is transformed into food by plants through photosynthesis. Herbivores, or plant-eating animals, eat the plants and receive energy. When the herbivore is eaten by a carnivore, an animal that eats a herbivore, the energy from the herbivore is transferred to the carnivore. The transfer of energy from one organism to another makes up a food chain. Animals eat to get energy and building blocks. All living things need food to provide materials for growth. Food chains start with organisms that make their own food, called producers, or autotrophs. Autotrophs basically means that they make their own food. Plants are the most common producers. Animals that are called consumers consume food, and they are heterotrophs, which means that they rely on other animals or plants to get their food. They eat and or consume other organisms. A food chain typically has only a few steps. This is because each time one organism eats another, some of that energy is used up and released as heat. Let's say, for example, the plant has a thousand units of energy. Well, when another organism eats it, the other organism has only a hundred units of energy after that. This is because of the 10% rule, which is something that you have to keep in mind. It basically states that however much energy one organism has, when another organism eats it, it only receives 10% of that original organism's energy. This is because it's using that energy for itself, and it's also releasing it as the form of heat. In fact, you are releasing heat right now, as you listen to this podcast, because your body is burning food to keep warm, and it's burning calories. Since some energy gets used up in each step of the food chain, there can only be a few steps. Otherwise, there's not enough energy left for the organism at the top, also known as the apex predator, or the predator that eats everything. Let's recap on what the different trophic levels or different levels of a food chain are called. The first is producers, the next is primary consumers. Primary consumers are usually herbivores and eat only plants. 
and their secondary consumers and tertiary com- consumers after that. And those can be carnivores or omnivores, which means they only eat meat or they eat meat and plants. After that comes the apex predator. The apex predator can't be eaten by anything else. This is the apex predator because it's right at the top. And examples of apex predators in many ecosystems can be wolves or even lions or tigers. After that come decomposers, which decompose and break down the dead remains and waste of these organisms, of any organism in fact. And they release that nutrients back into the soil. So those are the different trophic levels or levels of a food chain. Next is a food web. A food web is a model of intersecting food chains. Most organisms can be eaten and can be eaten by many different animals. A food chain wouldn't be able to show all this. Food webs show all these connections, and they're more complicated but more accurate. For example, in African savanna food chain, we can see that multiple arrows are pointing to different animals. Let's say we have a lion or a zebra or a gazelle. Arrows on food webs and food chains can show that the lions or zebras, um, all those different animals, get be eaten by each other. And the arrows show the flow of energy through an ecosystem or how ecosystems balance the amount of nutrients in the ecosystem. We've got to focus on something that's pretty important. It is a group of consumers that's often shown on food webs, and they're called decomposers. Decomposers are organisms, mostly bacteria and fungi, that break down dead plants and animals, eventually turning them into nutrients that will be added to the soil. These nutrients are very important to continue the cycle in the ecosystems. Slugs, earthworms, millipedes, centipedes, and mushrooms also help break down dead things. Without decomposers, nutrients would not get recycled, and we have piled up dead material everywhere. There's also another group of consumers called scavengers, like vultures, and they eat the dead remains instead of breaking them down. And they and scavengers and decomposers are really important for ecosystems because they ensure the balance between dead and alive animals. It is so cool to think that in your backyard, you have an entire food chain or even food web going on. Just go outside in your backyard and see what animals you can spot. Do you see a frog eating a fly or a grasshopper munching on grass or even a raccoon eating the garbage? Well, those are all examples of food chains. And did you know that humans also have places on many different food chains and food webs? That's right. Humans are always at the, usually at the top of the food chains when it comes to multiple food chains, like an ocean food chain where humans are at the top along with sharks because humans are eating the fish in the oceans and that causes them to be kind of the apex predator. It is so cool to think that we have a role and so many animals have a role in all of these food chains and food webs going around us and in all the ecosystems on Earth. Earth is such a magnificent place. Before I go adventuring in the nature to find out more, what did we learn today? We learned that food chains show the transfer of energy through ecosystems, and these chains show organisms eating one another, starting off with producers, like plants that make their own energy from the sun, and the sun is most important, remember that. It all goes to herbivores and then goes to carnivores, and eventually ending up at the apex predator, or the top predator that's not eaten by anything else, and finally ends with decomposers that break down dead waste. And these intersecting food chains can start to create food webs, and these food webs are the most accurate depiction of what animals eat. Even humans are part of a giant food web. It is so cool to think that even in your backyard, there is still a a big ecosystem and a big food chain that's going on just in your backyard. Try to go out there and see what food chains and food webs you can find. Please visit SpectacularSci.com, my podcast website, to find interactive activities, articles, and blog posts. You can also find the link to sign up for the Spectacular Science membership, where you can get lots of bonus content. 
You can also find a link to sign up in the show notes below. You can also contact me at spectacularside.com slash contact or email me at podcast at spectacularside.com. I love interacting with my listeners and I love it when people reach out to me asking me science questions and giving me episode recommendations. Thank you so much. Also, please subscribe wherever you're listening right now. It really helps and you'll be updated whenever you whenever we release a new episode. It also helps me create new episodes and encourages me a lot. Thank you so much for all your support. Thanks for listening to this episode and we'll see you on the next episode of Spectacular Science next week. Keep thinking about science.